The representative from North Carolina, Ms. Adams, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Uh, last month, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, one of the largest districts in North Carolina, launched a bold district-wide effort to shape a community vision for AI in education. Uh, they, they, they're inviting parents and teachers and students to the table, not just to respond to change, but to lead it. And that's the kind of leadership that we need. But instead, the, the leadership that we're seeing at the federal level is, is tying our school's hands with budget cuts, with confusion, with political agendas that have absolutely nothing to do with what's best for our most disadvantaged kids. The kids on free and reduced lunch, the kids who rely on Medicaid, the kids whose only option is public school. AI is already reshaping our classrooms. And so the real question is, how are we helping schools use it responsibly or leaving them to, or are we leaving them to figure it out on their own? And so here's what I've been hearing from educators, from parents and my own daughter who was a public school principal. The promise of AI is real, but so are the risks. And we've already seen cases where, as I reiterate my colleague Representative Lee has said, AI tools flag black parents for plagiarism at higher rates than their peers. And that's not innovation, that's bias, plain and simple. So Ms. Moat, AI isn't just showing up in lesson plans. It's now embedded in how students are evaluated, how feedback is given and how learning is tracked. And so how can schools ensure that AI tools are actually supporting equity? I know some people think that's a bad word, I think it's a good one. Uh, in classrooms, not reinforcing bias? And what role should the federal government play in setting guardrails to make sure that these tools serve all students fairly? Ms. Moat. Thank you. Uh, you actually offered the answer when you're talking about the great work that Charlotte Mecklenburg is doing right now, which is building AI literacy with parents, with communities, with educators, and really putting students and parents and communities and educators at the center of the work that they're doing. You have to be able to ask questions of these tools. You have to be able to understand if the results that they're putting out from these models have inaccurate information or might not uh, potentially have the right types of inputs. So if we don't build AI literacy in our educators, with our parents and with our communities, we're not gonna be able to use these tools to the best of their advantage. Well, thank, and thank you for your great comments about Charlotte Public Schools. Our, They're wonderful down our, there at Charlotte Metro. Our, our, our chair of our school board is sitting out here and I'm happy to see her. But while Charlotte Public Schools are trying to move forward with innovation, we're facing real, real, real setbacks. Just last month, we lost over $5 million in federal grants, uh, funding that helped high need schools recruit and train diverse teachers. And those grants were simply cut because they supported uh, DEI. I still think those are good words. But let's be clear, students learn best from teachers who understand them, who reflect their communities. That kind of representation isn't a luxury in a district where students represent more than 175 countries. It's essential. Ms. Moat, we know AI is a powerful tool, but it doesn't replace teachers, especially not teachers who reflect the lives and identities of the students they serve. So what are the consequences of cutting off funding for programs that recruit and retain diverse teachers? Well, I think every member of this committee can say that we need to keep teachers at the center of the education enterprise. And so when we don't have teachers to serve the communities that they are uh, from, when we don't have classrooms that are reflective of the communities that uh, students are coming from, we know actually that that affects student outcomes. Research shows us that having a connection with an adult in school, not only as I shared before, reduces suicidal ideation, but is the single greatest determinant of whether or not student learning outcomes will excel. So let me move on and, and talk about the data. So good policy depends on good information. But last month, the Trump administration eliminated nearly $900 million in, in contracts from the Institute of Education Sciences, the research arm of the Department of Education. And that's the same office that helps districts and policymakers understand what's working and what's not. So Ms. Moat, how does cutting IES funding impact the school's ability to use AI responsibly and equitably? And could that data gap leave underfunded schools even further behind? 
Yes, if we don't know what works for whom and under what conditions, how can we choose the right tools for students from all backgrounds? Thank you, Ms. Mode. And if we want students to succeed in the age of AI, we can't just chase shiny new tools. We have to invest in the people, in the research, and the infrastructure that make innovation safe and meaningful. And I thank you all very much. Mr. Chair, I'm going to yield back those few other minutes that I have.